Hello everyone, this is Ross here for Xbox Gamer Reviews and today we're taking a look at Candle The Power of the Flame. This releases on the 25th of July 2018, priced at £15.99, that's €19.99, €19.99 on the Microsoft Store. You can also pre-order it now and get a discount too. Right, let's jump into it and check it out. Legend tells us that the gods created and destroyed the world four times. A ray of light beamed down from the sky and struck the earth. From it flowed water, spilling out over the mountains and plains. With it, life was born. After their intervention, the gods observed how this life expanded. Patiently, they watched its evolution and development. Trees spread over the arid earth, and the sky, previously grey and roiled by endless storms, turned calm. Time passed, and the ephemeral creatures that inhabited the world evolved. Intelligence and consciousness emerged. Some of the beings started to speak to their creators. They thanked them for having given their lives meaning, for things worth striving, and for dreams. With all this, something marvelous came into being, civilization. The different peoples multiplied and flourished in harmony sharing knowledge and becoming wiser and wiser. The gods contemplated all of this with satisfaction. But then, something happened. These creatures, who had come so far, were invaded by ambition and greed. All the knowledge accumulated over centuries. All the advances were now being used by some to dominate others. That's when the violence started. Wars broke out like a great storm devastating everything in its path. Everything that these beings had achieved evaporated. The gods were furious. A great firestorm raised the earth and burned down its forests. The water that emanated from the mountains evaporated. The peoples were condemned, and all intelligent creatures vanished in the flames. Then the gods decided to try again. As the teachings of his master flooded his mind, Teku opened his eyes. In front of him he saw all the stars in the firmament. Suddenly he heard a fire crackling nearby. The last thing he remembered were the voices of alarm. His home was being attacked. Then he staggered to his feet. There was no time to lose. Right, uh, so we're going to get a bit of a tutorial to start us off with then. Uh, so we can grab ledges as well when we jump up underneath them. Okay. More close to the fire, an icon will show up. Press X to interact. Yeah, you can check all the actions, icons, and the help tab from the main menu. Right, let's go back down, climb down to the ledge with the down on the d-pad, okay, right, there we go, perform a long jump if you press A while running to get to the other side, pick up the torch, open the inventory with a 
pause menu by pressing Y. Okay, well, there we go. Explore the cabin. Tickle couldn't go on. It was too dark. Well, you need the candle to be burning if you want to explore dark areas. Right, so let's go and light this torch then. So press X. A. There we go. Right, you will come across these little torches in your adventure. You can light them up to create fire so you can turn your candle on again. So that's there, you can see it ringed on the left side of the screen. It's a little candle just outside of the cabin there. Let's go and light that. Ah, there we go. Press X. Chappy, chappy. Yum, oh no! That poor man told Teku what happened. The tribe of the Wakcha had attacked the village and captured prisoners. One of them was Yaka, the tribe's shaman. He had to do something. Oh no. <laughs> I think he's dead. Okay. Right, so there's a Wakja warrior. When there's an enemy nearby, Teku will walk stealthily to make no, to not make any noise. Do not jump or run near an enemy, get out of the cabin quietly. Okay. Oh, it's creeping now a lot. Ah, some enemies will detect your candle if you're near them. Turn off the candle by holding down B. There we go. Be closer to the Wakja and push him into the chasm. See you, mate. <laughs> right, turn your candle on again. Teku can use the sacred power of fire to cast a big flash around him. With it, he will uncover secrets, activate mechanisms, and make some characters react. Press B to use the light burst power and escape. Okay, so let's light our candle again. I'm assuming we've got to do that over the other side there. Where it's rings. That must be to do with that. There's a target on the wall on the right side. Have to look out for them. Okay, we just put our, uh, put our flame out. I did that wrong. Try that again. There we go. Just tap it and press and hold it. <laughs> Before going into the forest, Teku looked back one last time. His village, once full of life, was now an immense flame that reared up against the darkness of the night sky. The few survivors left waved goodbye to Teku in a small gesture. Tears streamed down their masks as they thought about all that had been lost. But there was no time to lose. He was determined to find Yaka and the rest of his men. After all, a light guide must never abandon its shaman. After three hours of crossing the forest, as he followed the trail of the Wakjas, the first rays of sun started to filter through the branches of the trees. When he emerged from the thicket, Teku stopped at the foot of a cliff. The captor's trail ended there. There was a large marsh down below, a few bonfires dotted the landscape. It could be them. Teku leaned out over the abyss, trying to figure out the best way of getting down, without realizing that the ground he was walking on was giving way under his feet. His adventure 
was about to begin. Wake right. up, Teku. Come on. Pretty pressing X. Okay, let's go. Ah, let's get up. Okay. again. Some sort of mug, jug. Is it press Y? We can, can't we? Empty jar. A very old ceramic jar, nicely decorated. It was partially broken, but it could still be used to carry some fluid. It had a golden colour, just like honey. Well, I think that must be a clue then. Let's have a look. Right, so we've got a candle thing here that's not lit. Um, gap to jump over here. That weird looking frog over there. He came towards us then. Let's have a look. Oh, <laughs> he's eating us. All right, we'll, uh, we went to that again. All right, so we're back up there. Okay, so at least it sort of checkpoints when you pick things up. All right, let's try again then. Stay away from the dangerous man-eating frog. All right, there's an arrow that way, but there's also something over here. Let's have a look. Right, so we can save the game. So let's save there. I do about the save slot, yes. Right, that'll do then. Let's got this ladder, have a look. What's that? I'll have to go back down, okay. Pull this lever. Ah. Big gap there, we can't, no way we're about to jump that. Teku observed the gigantic carved rock. It appeared to be an effigy of a powerful toad. It must represent somebody important. Nevertheless, the wooden structure didn't seem very stable. Right, it definitely gives you clues. I mean, wooden structure didn't seem very stable. Yeah, we can uh, we can break that. Um, okay. Oh, <laughs> right. The ladder disappeared in the uh, the bit we came up at the beginning, so we can't go back down there. I tried to hide underneath that, but that killed us. Let's. Um, See that's that looks like it's weak because that moves them when you walk on it. Anything we can do here. Oh, okay. So can we? Yeah, well, um, so that because I think that's what squashed us last time. So if I do this, it should be okay now. I'm gonna get flattened. Fingers crossed. Hey. Oh, let that roll over there. That'll give us a platform. See what this is? Let's press Y. This is cutting rock. It was carved and ready to slice like a knife. 
It's not very useful as a weapon, but this rock was the perfect tool for any novice adventurer. Teko wouldn't get rid of it during his journey as he would need to use it many times. Right, yeah, so definitely get loads of clues about stuff and how you're supposed to use them. Well, the ladder's come back now. We can also cross over here now that heads fell in there. Right. There's a ladder there, but it's closed off. Climb up this way, so have a quick look. Ah. Oh, <laughs> right, we can't do that then. Um, no, I wonder how we're supposed to do that. I'll tell you what, we'll do is we'll go back down the ladder. And we'll go to the right. We must have to come back here later on. Stay away from the killer frog. about those platforms. The ancients used them to travel rapidly to distant places. But to use it, he needed his candle to be burning. Right. Teku immediately recognized the man who was asking for help. It was one of the bodyguards of Yaka, his tribe shaman. He had to help him, but how could he get to him? Hmm. Oh, let's go this way. Oh, see, so let's press X on that. Cutting rock? No. Uh, jar? No. Okay. <laughs> There's something in this bush. Please don't be something that's going to eat us. Oh, that's quite an odd looking rabbit. Right. He's hungry. Ticket he wants honey. Yeah, so we need to get this rabbit some honey. Okay. So, how are we going to do that? We can't do anything with this. Can't climb any higher. So, um, how do we get back down? There we go. Until let the uh, icon pop up. Now, I'm not going to risk jumping in that water because it doesn't look very sanitary. <laughs> so, let's go and find what else we can do. Let's have a quick look this way actually. Let's drop down here. Let's see if there's any beehives or anything over this other side. We've not spotted. Um Nope, that's just a dead end. Alright, there's nothing up there. on the other side of that water. No. Alright, okay then. Let's um Can we trick the frock? Let's just hang here a minute and see what happens. Oh no, <laughs> they didn't jump up quick enough. 
I want to see if we can get past him and go down that hole that's behind. Right, where are we? Up the top there. Oh, what's that? Aha! So that is a dart. These darts were commonly used by all the tribes to hunt small animals. They were covered with a lethal poison that made them very dangerous. Some kind of weapon was needed to use it. Okay, so we need to find a weapon. So... We have to have a look for some sort of dark gone thing. It's got to be something up this way. I didn't notice that um, dart the first time we passed that sign. Let's have a proper look around. We are going to have to end the video soon though because we're at 20 odd minutes already. So we'll see what we can do though. Aha, something there. A large symbol painted in green was hidden behind the enormous rock. He didn't know its meaning, but he had the feeling it was something important. Okay. Can we climb up there? Nope. We've got no symbols popping up. We need the symbols to pop up to know that we need he to do something. He wasn't aware of it yet, but Teku had the solution right in front of his eyes. Okay. <laughs> nice. See that just kills us as soon as we climb up. There's something up there, Lock. But how do we get up there? That's the thing. Can we equip these things? Okay, we need to get a flame from somewhere though. Um, he wasn't aware of it yet, but Teku had the solution right in front no. of him. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> Aha. Now, I spotted that because on the rock, where it kept saying the solution was right in front of your eyes, you see this blue little painting? There's a picture of a person hanging on to it, like a vine. There we go. This game's quite clever. Let's, um, a strange mechanism seemed to be controlling the water coming out of the enormous gourd. And Teku remembered having seen that symbol before. Right. Let's do that because this is the on top of where the frog was earlier there was water and two flames what does that one do does that switch okay let's try that one no, it keeps doing the same one All right I think what we'll do is we'll leave the video there for today because I'll be playing this all day out and we are at 25 minutes now, 24 minutes. So there you go, this has been the first 20 odd minutes of Candle, the Power of the Flame. I hope this video has given you a nice little insight to the game, what it looks like, what it plays like. If it does, please leave a like on it. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon.